Okay, here's the thing with the Tel Aviv ecosystem, right? You sit and you're talking to one person and then like, just like random superstars just walk by like as if they're like some normal people. Oh, you're a big deal. You're kind of a big deal. You are. You're kind of a big deal. Who are you? Hi, I'm Tal. I'm not sure I'm that big deal. You're so. a big deal. You can't see anything, right? we were In Google, we were saying under promise over deliver. Under promise. Uh, okay, I like that. Well, yeah. But okay, so fine. You didn't promise. I promise. I'm the one that's hyping you up. You're not hyping yourself up. Whatever. So it's all good. Whatever. Okay, so who are you? I'm, yeah. I'm Tal. I was a lot of time in Google. Now I'm with Samsung next. How long were you at Google for? Nine years. Nine years. That's like a lifetime. Yeah, kind of. In tech, it's two, I think. Yeah, that's true. What was your role there again? I was marketing manager in Israel. I was leading um, YouTube marketing. I started a holiday in Israel. Did you know? Started a holiday? What does that mean? Yeah, the shopping holiday. I don't understand. We uh, imported Cyber Monday to Israel. Israel. You did that? To Israel, yeah. So, so basically, I have, you, I have you to thank for that. That's amazing. I did not know. I did not know that. That is amazing. Yeah. So people don't know this. I speak about it often. People don't know that, like, people realize Google's in Israel and Facebook's in Israel and Samsung's in Israel, but they don't realize that, like, these companies are building core elements of their experience here in Israel. I mean, whether it's parts of search, whether it's parts of Android. I mean, Google's, like, seven minutes from here building really core elements of the Google experience. And mm -hmm. this one right here was leading YouTube marketing and all these things you were doing. It's unbelievable. Then you came to Samsung Next. What's yeah. Samsung Next? Um, Samsung Next is uh, a fund that uh, Samsung opened to accelerate its innovation. And basically, Samsung Next has $150 million to invest in startups and okay. ecosystems. And we invest like VC, but we also work very closely with the startups because we really want to help them grow and Amazing. build, grow and scale. So I'm working with portfolio companies. I just finished writing 500 words. What? In the time it took Oli and Adi to get me lunch. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe it took you like nice. long to get me the soup. So you um, also work with like amazing people on your team. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, Roy, and, and, and amazing Oli at Puel, and Adi Pinchas from Broadman 17, and Avi from iCoco. And Taguri. And Taguri. Amazing and, people. Like, I can't really stop naming. I hey, what up? Naming to not this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so the next star is here. Uh, the next Good star. Good to see you. It's great yeah, to see you. Like, Thank bye you. Come bye. here, Nathan. Come here, come here, come here. This is what I'm talking about. Wait, when's my meeting? I have 20 minutes to my next meeting. Come here, come here, come here. Sit down, sit down. Sit down. I know you have to eat lunch, I know, but sit here. Yeah. This is my boy Natan right here. Hey. Long time, man. Every time I come in here, I, so it's Saron, I see you. Who are you, real quick? I'm a developer at Kick. First of all, who are you? Not what I'm are you? Nathan. You go by Nathan, really? Yeah. Not Natan? Nah, I call you Nathan. Okay. So we worked together back in the day uh, on Zcast, on uh, my startup that he was the lead. He built them. He's the man. He's the man behind the magic, Started. basically. Yeah, I yeah. didn't finish. Okay. All right. All right. You built, you built the core. It's what's important. And now you're at Kick. Yeah. What do you do there? I'm a developer. We did a new cryptocurrency. I just sat with Natasha. She just told me about yeah. it. So you're building the iOS element of it. Uh, we're gonna have a few different. We have a few different teams. You having a good time? Yeah. That's the most important thing. Go eat your lunch. Let's catch up soon. Let's have coffee. It's been way too long. And we should talk after behind the camera. Behind the camera. Turn the camera off. All right, we'll do that. All right, man. See you later. Okay, now I'm going to Lemonade. I have like 15, 20 minutes till my meeting. But I, I think what's important for you maybe to understand is the level of the caliber of the people walking around here. I'm literally, none of that was planned. I kid you not. None of it was planned. This is the kind of people. Here comes Orly. Holy cow. Here comes Orly. Come here. Come here. You're on camera. She's running away. <laughs> She's running away. Okay, just say hi. 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 We've, we, we've interviewed Orly in the past. She's amazing. She's one of the first bloggers I, I followed on the internet and UX and product expert. I'm not gonna force her to go on camera even though I did last time. 15 minutes till my meeting, so I gotta run. But the concept that I wanted you to understand is the caliber, the level of people walking around the streets of Tel Aviv. You got people here building world-class innovation, changing the world, and you're fortunate enough to meet some of them. Off to Lemonade. <laughs>I'm just gonna say one thing. The level of ADD in this in this meeting, like, sh like should be illegal. Like, I, I don't think we like literally. I don't think either one of us got one sentence out of our mouths in the last hour without the other person jumping in. Which all good, is, all good. Just fine. All for good right. reasons. Knock on the rules, and we're the best looking dude that I know. But he knows I it. Say, that's, I w that's the problem. He knows it. This is the I problem. wouldn't set the bar that low. Who long. are you? Is it weird that I'm arm around you? Uh, it can be potentially awkward. This is making you As my daughter says, it's teensy awkward. I know where, I know where to put my arm. Where to put my arm? Where am I put it? Like, like this? It's awkward. It can get worse. It can get better. Yeah, I'm listening. Who are you? Yes. Yeah, I think it's awkward. Yeah. No, 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 we're going to leave it here. <laughs> Just put it down. Put it down. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, it's, it's be normative people. <laughs> who am I? Um, married, five children. That's who you are? Living in Beijing. When I ask you, are you define yourself by, by your marital status? First, my family first. Really? 100%. Is that, is that how you define yourself? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a religious Jew, a family man. I'm not sure what I think of that. I don't think about that. It's interesting. Okay, all right, great. Where are you from? Originally born in New York. 
Where? Brooklyn. Starting so Beach. So Old sorry. school. So sorry. Um, okay. Moved to Israel. How long ago? Thank God my parents made Aliyah 30 years ago. Okay. 30 years ago. Yeah. Love it. All right. Let's just jump right in because first of all I have had like I easily I'm gonna have like a 35 minute episode today like 85 in interviews today so I'm gonna have to keep this short for the sake of my happy to be the bottom of the food chain two things to ask you we're gonna start first thing you just told me really a, a chill inducing story like a story honestly a really I've heard some amazing stories this is a pretty amazing story so take take into account that a lot of the people that are watching this aren't necessarily Jews or religious Jews and so explain this to me and, and if you can in, in English terms what happened I'm gonna try to make it quick and I apologize if anyone's heard the story before before. It's okay, it's an amazing All right. story. You told me I heard it before, I didn't remember it. Amazing. Yeah, I'm listening. Um, in the year 2001, me and a couple friends, we used to do this uh, Havdalah ceremony, which is a ceremony to end the day of rest. Anyone that Seven. follows Hillel knows 25, 25 hours. hours, no pinging, twinging, swinging. I just recreated the pose. Um, <laughs> what is happening? So, okay, you guys good, know what I mean. We have a good time, yes. In, yes, in yes, any case. Yes. Um, so we, we started doing it on the street in Ben Yehuda, which is a popular pedestrian mall in Israel. Shook is the new Ben Yehuda. You notice that, right? Shook is the Shook. Ben Yehuda's like not, there's nothing going on there anymore. Well, that's where everyone's hanging out. Anyway, anyway, he used to do these things, you know, with guitars, singing, dancing, like the ceremony to end the Sabbath. End yes. the Sabbath, end the day of rest, with a couple of friends, instruments, guitars, bongo, stuff like that. Uh, it was a rough time in Israel in 2001. Um, unfortunately, a lot of terror, a lot of suicide bombings, like almost on a weekly basis. It was very, very... Uh, um, nervous, nerve-wracking to walk the streets of Jerusalem. Right. We started doing this. We figured, you know, we're going to keep our spirits high. We would end Shabbat. And Still have to we... talk about business. So can you like hurry up? I'm just kidding. All, all right, right. All make right. it dramatic. It's, it's all good. Please, please continue. As my grandfather used to say, can't be a little bit pregnant. If you want to hear this story, you don't. And escalate so, quickly. Yes. All right. We used to do the ceremony. Eventually, it grew. More people started coming. We had 10, 20 musicians on the street. People started joining us. Someone donated a sound system. People came with a full drum set. Within a couple months, it turned into a full-blown street performance that went on for like three hours. Hundreds of people dancing, Jews, non-Jews, Hasidic Jews, Sephardic Jews, not Ashkenazi Jews, religious, secular. It was beautiful. And unfortunately, the security situation was getting worse and worse, and it was getting really scary to be in the streets. And we said, we'll let them crush our, our us physically, but we're going to keep our spirit strong. We did this, and then one Saturday night in December 2001, we had been playing for about two and a half hours. And while I'm singing into the microphone, we were singing Am Yisrael Chai, a popular Israeli song. And uh, a 14-year-old girl whispers into my ear while I'm singing. Uh, you know, my mother, she said she lives upstairs from us, and the speakers are really loud, and she's trying to sleep. Is it okay if you lower the speakers? So, you know, usually in a situation like this, one has the deliberation you got 300 people dancing one person is trying to sleep how do you balance between you know the greater good I said to her um, you know if your mom's trying to sleep it's probably a good time to uh, to stop the music and she's like no no no, it's fine it's fine just lower the speakers I said no it's probably a sign if your mother's trying to sleep it's probably time to end so I went into the microphone and I said to the crowd of it must have been about 300 people said we're just gonna end the song there's a famous saying in Hebrew Derek Heretz Kadmah Torah basically being a good human comes before you know letter of the law of the letter of religion, you gotta be a you gotta be a mensch. First, first be a good person. Be a good person first as a prerequisite. Um, and after the song, we're gonna stop. We finished the song and we packed everything up and everyone dispersed. And five minutes later, literally five minutes later, a suicide bomber blew himself up exactly where we were all standing. 300 people, exactly in that spot. Third time hearing the story, like my hairs are, that's insane. That is actually insane, but you know, um, very, very obviously deep and profound lesson. Probably very, it impacted your life deeply. Correct. Uh, it happened to have been a really bad, it was a triple suicide bombing that night. Two of them went off together. 11 teenagers were killed. Um, obviously traumatic incident, uh, which and we were saved miraculously. I, I actually happened to have been standing there when it happened, and the blast blew in the other direction. Uh, the only point that I would share with your viewers is, you know, people came to me, they're like, oh, in merit of the fact that you guys do this ceremony, God protected you, and I'm not into that stuff at all. On the uh, contrary, in merit of you stopping. Yeah, meaning, meaning you know, I, I, I wouldn't I have to try to figure out God's calculations. Right. Uh, it's not my business, but I do know one thing. If I didn't care that someone was trying to sleep, I wouldn't be alive today. That's the only message I could give. Enough said. Don't even say anything else because that is an amazing way to end that segment. Now let's segue over to what do you do? What do I do? Yes. Um, so I've been blessed, thank God. I, um, I do consulting for philanthropists and for philanthropic foundations. Uh, I help them plan, manage, and leverage their uh, philanthropic investments in Israel. So we're talking about people that, uh, thank God, are able to give generously to a wide plethora of social causes, right. um, and they want to do it right. It's hard-earned money, 
and they want to invest wisely. But you're also, in addition to that, pretty active politically. Nothing. I mean, I don't know if you. I don't even know if you're like politically affiliated with any party. But you're you're pretty involved in the Knesset. I see you. Could be yeah, yourself. yeah. Not not with a particular party. I guess uh, part of what I do, one could say, has like a little bit of a lobbying twist to it. So you know, you'll have social impact investors that would want to impact legislation, okay. bureaucratic social issues. So I guess part of what I do is kind of high-end philanthropy, if you would call it that. Okay. People that are looking for game-changing. Um, big ideas brings big money. Got it. Um, and that's you know, the kind of stuff that I work on. Okay, so there's that, and then there's your next kind of, not next, but parallel step and in more into the profit world. We talk a little bit about that or not? Rather, we don't. No, I mean, uh, I'm, focused, I'm focused on what I do. What I do usually is three things. Either I help donors, but investors, uh, due diligence pre-investment. Okay. I help them run projects. And I do like um, family office portfolio management services okay. for um, philanthropic families in addition to whatever family offices they have that manage their for-profit business. Let's just say this. If someone's watching this, A, who would if be the... If anyone's watching That's funny. A, who would be the person... Why do you gotta... My, my heart... If, if who A, who would be the person who should be contacting you and B, how do they contact you? Who's the right person? Who you, who's your audience? Who, who should be reaching out to Nachman Rosenberg? People that are philanthropically active. Um, people that are contributing enough, but mainly people that care enough. There are people, and I'm not judging, who give away... You aren't um, judging by that. Really not. People say I'm not judging. It's like, no no offense. No, no, wait, if you say something, no, no offense is always going to be offensive. Right, so when you say I'm not judging, you're really judging. No, no, no. There are people who give away money who are less uh, concerned with getting into heavy due diligence. They want to give, they trust the people they're giving it to, right. and um, that's fine. Okay, you're not judging. So the people that I, I knew it wasn't, if I was, trust me, when I judge, you'll know. Listen, every dog um, has that like, you were right this time. <laughs> so, every other debate I'm right, this time you were right. Uh-huh. It's okay. All right, listen, dude, listen, how do, they, how do people reach out to you? A lot of what I do is, my to be age. honest, my editor is going to murder me. I'm up for 10 minutes. How do people reach out? A lot of what I do is by referral only, to be honest, but you could email me at um, NR, which stands for Nachman Rosenberg, at Nachman, N A C H dot biz dot B I Z. We gotta do that again. That's way too confusing. NR. At Nachman. At Nachman, N A C H M A N. Dot biz dot B I Z. That's it, Nachman dot B I Z. NR. At Nachman. You have a website, Nachman dot biz? Yes. It's pretty, it's pretty sexy. Well, Nachman dot biz, it's a great, it's a great domain. Yeah. I like that. Made it home. Super exhausted. Today was bonkers. Must have broken some kind of record. I am now going to crash. See you tomorrow.